e-gaming bets. We accept bets on computer games online since 2011. Referral system for regular users and the first deposit bonus. Gaming devices store and the best choice of payment systems. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, Counter-Strike and StarCraft, World of Tanks and League of Legends. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Fast as lightning, solid as a rock, cheap as duck. <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace. Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Hello everybody and welcome to your coverage for yet another day of Dota Pit Season 4 by G2A. Season 3, isn't it? Season 3. Yeah. Season 3. No, Season Good 4. Good job, Toby. I was right! I was right! It was Season 4! <laughs> what? Is it? Yeah, because oh, we, we, we play doing, Yeah, we played Season 3. Yeah, we were right. doing that one the other day. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Good, good job on the long intro, though. Was uh, it? I appreciated it. Really? Yeah, give me enough time to swallow the rest of my food in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like scarfing down that's, food for the last five minutes. That's it, boys. How do we start off today? Well, Cap's gonna swallow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're also starting. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. Are you gonna say you're gonna start out on the global strat? Because that's what I was gonna say. I was not actually thinking that. I was thinking we were gonna start off with something new, different, and unusual, which is the Power Rangers stand in of Illidan. Yeah, oh, uh, that's also true. Power Rangers tweeted out just previously that they were uh, actually having a stand in for today's game, and uh, yeah. Illidan is going to be it. This is exciting. Illidan... Man, the CIS scene is such a mess right now. <laughs> Illidan is probably... Um, I think a little of this, a little of that. One of the best... Can one of the best players that isn't attached to a team mm -hmm. in the CIS region. If not the best. Can we just decide that the CIS scene... Because we've got to make it sound, make it sound cultured and uh -huh. really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. We'll say the CIS scene is eclectic. It's a little bit of everything just being thrown around everywhere until it all comes together. Uh, maybe. Is eclectic the word? <laughs> maybe. Can we give it a more cultured word than that? Radiant I don't know if it's possible. Back. Well, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. But um, I, I, I do want to say that I believe that VP Dyer made the right choice. Um, I've long been a f big fan of Silent, and I do... I genuinely believe that he is going to be better th for the VP team than Illidan was. You just saying like mindset wise, back. or because um, you said like player skill wise, play style. Um, I think is a perhaps a bit more beneficial. Illidan is like um, part of the thing about Virtus Pro is that they have um, some problems with yellowing it too much. Remaining. They're really good at it. Like they're really good at like being aggressive and diving Five in deep as a team, remaining. and that works out for them. But one thing that um, consistently they mess up on is pushing high ground. Like how many back. times you've seen VP push high ground with a 10 grand, 10k advantage, and um, they end up losing the game. You know that's like it repeats time and time mm -hmm. again. Um, and I do think that Illidan, his aggressive nature. Um, does not help them with Ten that problem, where Silent may be better. Now, I, I am not that intimate Five with the CIS scene remaining. that I'm going to say I know you know Illidan and, and Silent personally. I've talked to Illidan a handful of times. Reserve I've time. never... Uh, I've talked to Silent like twice. Um, but you, you get but, a lot, but, of, you but get a lot from, of time with FNG. Yeah, and from everything that FNG says, it sounds like that it's going to be more beneficial for the team. But I would say that playstyle-wise, I think... I also think as a player, Silent is actually a bit better. Uh, Silent for me was uh, like, for a long time, was like the the best 
the best carry player coming out of that region. Like, almost hands down. It, w it was, like, not even that's, close. That's a big call, considering how many carry players they've got down in CIS. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, a lot, a lot of it, I was actually comparing it to, like, the whole of Europe at a certain point in time. And I was just going, like, man, Silent is really good. Um, but I digress. I think that Illidan is pretty damn amazing. And I think that it's uh, a crying shame Dyer that he's not on a Tier 1 team right now. And maybe he can make Power Rangers great again. Who knows? Well, we were talking about it yesterday Radiant with uh, Power Rangers pick. having a couple of hiccups and just seeing the removal of FNG and the inability as a, as a team to always have that that focus and purpose uh, in the games. But yep. we'll see what happens tonight. Uh, obviously, with a stand-in, that focus and purpose may not be perfect, but we'll see how it's going to run Dyer out as the tree protector. Pick. We're seeing this guy time and time and time again. Uh throughout our games over the course of this week. He's the new thing. You should also know too the Power yes, Rangers indeed. still are willingly banning Chen uh, even though he did get nerfed a little bit uh, over the course of the night time. Um, another side yeah. note is also the complete absence of Invoker from the ban pool who got heavily nerfed. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, we actually, is, is heavily the right word? I, I, I go to my I expert for heavily or not. Oh, see, that's the thing. You can't go, you can't call me an expert because I'm not an invoker player, Reserve but time. I feel like invoker is still pretty Radiant damn good. Like, pick. the agility nerf slowing down his attack speed and also that will make him go down one whole armor. Um, That's a start from preventing him to pun it, like... Because the, the biggest thing that I think that would help with is the um, the cold snap. Mm -hmm. So when you go this like right click, you early on you harass the enemy, you cold snap them. If you're not getting as many attacks, it, it, it in, just seems like like in like Dyer you're talking like this back. makes it sound like his early game lane presence is crippled more than anything else. Yeah, I think that the mana cost uh, increase. Like there will be some some scenarios where. Um, that is going to come into play and like, damn, the Invoker doesn't have enough mana for his full, you know, wombo remaining. combo um, or something like that. But I, I think that it's um, five seconds remaining. Not rare, but it's going to be less time. to talk about, I guess. But yeah, I guess I will just have to see as it plays out. I don't think the Chen was really harmed that much by the nerfs. I think they were smart nerfs and... Um, Something like that needed to happen, but I don't think Ten it uh, keeps remaining. Chen out of that tier one pool. Not for me, anyway. The Earthspear and Skyrath Mage picked remaining. up by Tornado Rocks. Um, love the name, by the way. Their Dyer lineup's team. looking pretty good when it comes to ganking power. Skyrath Mage has a uh, very high level of, uh, or high range initiation um, from Concussive Shot. Earthspear is even better with his Rolling Boulder. And um, that slow is even better than Skyrath Mages is slow. The they do have to slightly worry about the fact that their um, Spectre may be pressured by a Bat Rider, but Legion Commander now picked up a solid disabling hero against Morphling, and it works really well with Skyrath Mage. I like this pickup quite a bit. I did not see it coming at all. But I think it was great. You look at the other lockdown heroes, the offlaners that pair well with Skyrath Mage. Um, let's see, Sand King's not bad. Clockwork is a, a classic pair. Uh, Beastmaster would have been actually pretty good because there's a Bat Rider in the pool. Remaining. And it, I think it's also pretty good versus Wisp. That, for me, was the hero that Five I probably would have gone remaining. with as a guest. But, but they needed some hard disable. That was the kind of thing which was missing yeah. from rocks. Le Legion Commander's duel is probably like a full second longer. Than, uh, than Roar? Let's see. I'll figure it out. I'm also interested to see, like, uh, the effect of press the attack in this game. Because, like, you look at the stuns and you look at the control from Power Rangers, and they also, like, there's... For, for a CIS versus a CIS team, this seems like a very, well, almost unusual draft in a way that you just don't have brawlers who have, like, mass amounts of stun and heavy amounts of nuke. Yeah. The nuke damage is there Prepare from, at least from the Rocks Kiss lineup. Set nice. I was right. Stone. It is. One uh, second a longer? Full, a full second longer at level one. Now, obviously, later on levels, uh, dual will scale better than um, than the stun duration of Primal Roar. So at level three, uh, Primal Roar goes up to four seconds, where Legion Commander's uh, dual goes to 5.5 .5 seconds. Um, 
So that that can actually be quite the factor when it comes to locking down a, a very mobile hero like Morphling, um, who's pretty obnoxious. And again, I think this will set up the Earth Spirit and the Skyrath Mage pretty well. And you needed an aggressive hero that would um, create some space. A especially when you have the global of Zeus, I think that Legion Commander and Zeus have this pretty damn good back. synergy where Liege Commander will be able to pick up some early dual wins that she normally wouldn't be able to unless she had the impact of these two different global heroes. What do you think about this from uh, from J4 very early on? He actually decided to level up Leech Seed instead of Living Armor. And mm -hmm. this is before he sees a single hero. Like, he TP'd down at the bottom lane, planted the Observer Ward, which scattered out the entire movement of Rock's Kiss, hence PR now uh, just controlling the top rune. It's just a simple trade-off for runes. But to go for Leech Seed above that of the Living Armor... <laughs> what's bigger for me, Toby, is that he doesn't have an Iron Talon. <laughs> True. Yeah, um... I'm not sure... But that wasn't J4 yesterday, though, that was doing no, that. No, 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 no. That it was, that was, um... Oh, God, who was that name? Uh, Funnick? No, it wasn't Funnick. Funnick didn't play it. It was, um... No someone fear? else from that team. Who? No Fear, No Fear. No Fear was the one that did it. Wasn't one of the... It wasn't one of the games Funnick was playing it, and then, like, a different day, No Fear was playing it? Uh, I think both the games it was No Fear. Oh, okay. Um, either way, I, I'm not... Like, level one living armor is okay. I'm not sure if it's going to make too big of a difference, him not having it. Um, but I, I will explain, like, one of the main reasons he doesn't have Iron Talent. Like, maybe Power Rangers really don't uh, regard that playstyle of Train Protector to be that strong. Um, but the primary reason is going to be that Train Protector needs to be the hard five when you have a Wisp on your team. The, the Wisp needs to be able to get Bottle as fast as possible. That's why Big Num didn't buy any of the support items, so obviously... It's left to the train protector. Mm -hmm. um, the laning phase for Power Rangers should be pretty damn good here. They've got uh, a Viper safe lane going up against a Skywrath Mage and um, Spectre. Side note. I'm actually not sure how I feel about this. What a Skywrath Mage and Spectre? Yeah. It's very uh, secret style. Because he, he uh. would do things like this as well, and then you'd like you'd ensure your safe lane farm, like so much more. Like you just power level. Yeah. Which is what's going to happen here for Ghostic. Are you still up against the Bat Rider? And I, does, just press the attack, remove the sticky napalm charges. Ah, uh, yes, it does. Okay, so. The lane matchup should still then be in favor of, of the Legion Commander. Yeah, and if the Legion Commander was left at the bottom lane, the Viper would actually probably be left practically alone against oh. the Legion Commander. He would do that lane much better. Big Num? They're just trying to harass him out. Okay. He's already got his bottle, so he doesn't mind taking this damage because he's just going to repair Illidan in, just in a moment. So they're perfectly all right with this. Free Spirit is one hell of a hero. You know, I've been uh, practicing it lately. I know you have. <coughs> I saw and, your uh, tweets about it. I think you also saw, like, my FU gifts back at you. You're a he's disgusting. A he's a pretty high skill camp. Oh, I mean, honestly, people people can't complain about, like, it being cancer and yada, yada, yada anymore. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you really, you can't, though. We can do anything we want, Cap. It, it, it got, oh, they, they might actually get J4. Beautiful play there from Yol. Yeah. What that was is um, Earth, Earth Spirit, when you hit somebody, he'll always show up on the other side of them. So anytime the train protector or anytime a hero tries to go down these single file areas, like any of the ramps or anything like that, Rolling Boulder is excellent at keeping that hero from uh, getting away because you'll block them out. So that was um, a great play there by Yul. And perhaps just a bit of, um, a bit of inexperience with the Earth Spirit from Dream Protector. He definitely shouldn't be trying to go down that single fire area. He, he also, like, maybe they can't also predict that rotation of, of the Earth Spirit. Like, Yol makes his, his play onto that mid lane, instantly attacks into the Wisp, does as much damage, takes as much attention as possible, and then quickly moves down to the bottom lane. Now that it's server ward, like, there is no vision from Power Rangers. They're gonna find themselves another kill, this time over on the Viper. Radiant but the Observer Wars don't scout the rotation, attack. unless it's going up to the top lane, which is where Roxkis are not moving any supports. They're fine just having Legion Commander doing her thing against the Batrider. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to just 
double checked that uh, press the attack does remove sticky napalm? Uh, it does. Okay. I've, you watched I've, it? I've seen two moments okay. where uh, ghost Radiant's attack has removed the sticky napalm. I was like 90% sure about that, but... Yeah, you are correct, Cap. But yeah, I, Legion Commander is just, like I've seen it before, Legion Commander lanes pretty damn well against Batrider, like probably one of the best melee heroes to do so. And again, like the matchup would have been bad for the Legion Commander if she was bottom against the, the Viper, which they probably would have left practically solo, mm -hmm. so that wouldn't have been good. It, you don't want to aggressive try lane with a Spectre, but I think Tornado Rocks realized that this is actually the best way to set up their lanes. Oh, mid lane. They're going to chase down BZZ. Oh, no. The Wiz didn't get up there. That he TV didn't support. get up on the cliff, and now Illidan's dead. Y'all's just going to kick him into oblivion. <laughs> allowing Zeus to finish the job with a level 1 Thunderbolt. That was um, a bit misfortune there. Like, that, if Big Num had got up on the cliff, then he could have chased with the spirits. But I also think Big Num probably could have played that a bit better. If he'd stretched out his spirits earlier, maybe he could have clipped the Zeus a couple times, and Morphling commits for the kill gets it, and maybe he dies, but that's okay. The foot race between Cheshire Cat as well as a uh, press the attack Legion Commander. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're always able to get away, because, like, you just press the attack and then turn, so you don't have that nasty turn rate. That, that is the biggest thing that affects you when uh, dealing with the Batrider in lane. It's not the slow, it's the turn rate slow. That really messes me up. Oh, J4's going to be in trouble again. Yol's already started his rotation. And uh, there's a kick. Ashley catching out too. The ball went forward and they're focusing on the tankiest of them all, which is a Dream Protector. So he'll living armor up. Potentially Roskis could have just jumped for the uh, for the Viper then. But they already started on the on the train. I do think they need to um, calm down a little bit in this bottom lane. As the levels go on, they have like uh, less and less of a chance to actually get the kill. And if they try for it, they're going to get turned around on, honestly. Um, so I think they do need to start considering perhaps um, just sitting in lane and farming it up for now. And probably in about a minute or two, rotate out. You don't want to leave uh, an aggro tri lane, especially with a carry like They're going again. This time it's over on the Viper. The kick, it does manage to tag him on the back line. But now also with the boulder going forward. But J4, he gave enough life through the leech as well as the living armor that the Viper is just able to tank through the spam of Rock's Kiss. Yeah, you actually saw the potential for them to turn there, right? Like, the Earth Spirit was actually the last hero that you're looking at going, maybe he will die. Go Sticks in trouble. Cheshire Cat can now start lacquering on again the uh, Sticky Nade Pump before he goes in for the last two. Ensuring there's enough of a burn, but Legion Commander with the Stick Charges fire. and now the Fairy Fire. That last attack, though, will be more than enough from the Batrider. A message from on high. So the rotation from the Wisp, this time it's the successful one from PR, giving them the first kill. And this is, the, this is the other thing. Legion Commander hit level 6. Great for Legion Commander. Bad when the Bat Rider gets his level 6. Because he can't actually kill the Legion Commander. At least force her out of lane. So they need to change up the lanes. They need to Dyer's put the tri lane up attack. against the Bat Rider now. And let Legion Commander... I mean, they don't even put the tri lane there. They just keep, like, Skyrath Mage and Spectre against it. And then they roam around with Legion Commander and Earth Spirit. Well, instead, yeah. they sent Gersic to the top lane. I suppose he does have this safety period of another 40 seconds while the while the uh, flaming lasso is down. I yeah, I really disagree with them keeping the traditional lanes. Um, they may they switch it up with. because the, like, the Spectre's about to crack level six. He's actually going to TP back to base and will survive because of this. Smart. Um, but he's got his urn and he's just a uh, uh, he's 26 points of experience away from having his ulti. That would have been the quickest and easiest path up to the top. You just duel on the bat rider and you haunt in. Yeah, uh, yeah, that 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 was actually you're right. That's probably what their plan was. Unfortunately, it didn't quite pan out. Bat Rider knows that he needs to get out of town and finish up his blink. Elves could be so careful here. Actually, do you think? I've, yeah, he's got enough mana for it. Uh, BCZ's currently walking around with his ulti up, and Morphling is not too healthy. Like he's only got 400 life. Well, the thing is, he um, he didn't go for a level of Replicate. Um, that's fairly common, especially if you're going to be laning with the Whiff. Um, so he, he replicates in a strength so quickly. Like, he could, he would probably get an additional 100 HP. They're coming. Look for the kick right now. Y'all able to catch out two of them. Where's the ball forward as well? Thunder God's right doing a lot of damage. Big Num can't repair most of the damage, which is done. And in fact, Seedoy. Bit of a, uh, a late reality in there onto Illidan. 
Y'all's very lucky to survive. You can understand why Illidan had a great opportunity to hit multiple heroes there in that scenario, but if he had stuck around and right-clicked your spirit a little attack. bit more and then gone for the waveform, he, he actually could have picked up a double kill. But uh, I can understand why he was uh, a bit scared. But while all this was going on, now you see your rotation. Mm -hmm. So Sidoy heads towards the north, Legion Commander. Now he'll back out. Potentially he can just move into the jungle as well. Legion Commander isn't that bad at doing that. Even though you don't have a stout shield or the Iron Talon, it's still gonna be fine. I want to see if the Zeus still wants to build in for like. Cause I know we were talking about how great the Ether Lens is on on a Zeus, but with the nerfs now, where it doesn't offer any kind of magic resistance, I'm interested to see if BZZ still wants to prioritize it. It's the same kind of thing for the Sky Wrath Mage. You don't get the magic resistance, but you still get the extra range. So. It definitely has an effect in this game where there is a lot of magic damage, but... Hmm. It actually I, adds I think a question Zeus, mark to the item now. Yeah, I think Zeus is definitely one of the heroes that um, Ether Lens is still going to be consistently picked up on. Um, for this game, I'm not positive on it. Um, just because of the fact that standing far back may not be enough against the Batrider. He, he may still be able to catch you catch you out even with that ether lens. So you just go directly into Yules? Uh, yeah, maybe something like that. So he has like some sort of quick reaction. He can Yules the Batrider if Batrider is on him. You can probably still just do both as well. I guess it's also that Zeus has huge amount. Like he doesn't six slot himself that early on. Uh -huh. So you can just transfer like the arcane boots into it. Yeah, it's, it's not bad for him. Uh, BZZ still hasn't used this, like he's, well, apart from that mid. Um, he's still waiting for a good side gank opportunity to use that Thunder Cold's Wrath. Because it's still the Spectre Haunt, the Zeus Salty, and then the Legion Commander trying to make the most out of it. She did pick up the Iron Talon. So, Dosik has now just pushed himself into the jungle until he has a Blink Dagger. Looks like they're going to set up for a gank on Viper. At least they should be anyway. Um... I mean, it's they definitely need a hero to TP in. Like, they need Legion Commander to go to bottom lane. Uh, they can see. They can see y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all knows it. Yeah, I mean, just think about that, though. If, if the Legion Commander TPs early... Oh, Bat's oh, got his no. blink already. Ten minutes in, and y'all is dead. There's no way to survive. It's like, he can kick all he wants. But yeah, there was no one from Rock's Kiss coming, then. If they actually brought in the Legion, it may have, may have been worse, because that Legion would have been delayed on her Blink Dagger. Yeah, but they had the Spectre Ultimate, they had the Zeus Ultimate as well. Um, I feel like that they are not utilizing this combo very well. I mean, you had somebody behind the Viper to slow him down in order for the Legion Commander to catch up and get the duel. Attack. If you get the duel, I think you, like, guaranteed win the, the duel at the very least, because you have those double ults that are going to pop. Dyer's They're not going to have too many better attack. opportunities than that. Because they can't go on mid at any point in time because the Wisp is naturally going to relocate somebody out. Nobody's really showing up at top lane. It's just the Trim Protector who's sitting far back. Hmm, not many options for this Legion Commander. At least for early game duels, I guess. You gotta focus on uh, finishing up uh, Radiant's top seems, tower but. is under attack. Yeah, if it's possible, just get some picks on the wisp, but that's gonna be all. But you you kind of need to though. Like Illidan's just gonna get stronger and stronger. If he gets that Lincoln Sphere, then the duel's never gonna happen. Yeah, like I specifically pointed out how the globals work well in Legion Commander because it's about the early game. Yeah. The early game where the Legion Commander typically can't just duel somebody and be like, oh, that's a win. You know, you, you actually need some additional help in order to start those first couple of duels in the early game. But now you're pushing Legion Commander into yeah. the mid game before she's even <clears> going to do her first duel. Like it's it's kind of like the danger zone where like, if you don't hit that sweet timing, like just before the Lincoln Sphere is up on the Morphling, so you can initiate him, the mech is practically done. If it's not actually fully done, it's fully done over on the Viper. So now he's tanky as hell and also gets an extra life for the rest of PR. Combine that up with J4, who does get caught out, and now they actually use their ul their ulti combo. They bring in more help because the relocate came in from Big Num. So you lose the Skywrath Mage, Big Num is barely able to survive, stick charging himself back up again. 
As Elden wants to chase after BZZ, but the relocate's gonna pull Elden back to the mid lane to continue with this farm. Chasing into uh, the Dire Jungle may not have been the greatest idea, right? So the relocate back works. But that's just a one for one trade off when you blow both of your big globals. And they got a tree and protector out of it, right? Tree and yeah, for a sky, uh, for a sky middle tower yeah, is under attack. Dyer's if anything, that's probably just an even trade. The Morphling is going ham on this mid tier one. Also, BCC just doesn't have the power to push him back right now. Uh, you got Cheshire Cat as well, waiting for that opportunity. So if he goes into fire fight now, yep, they see BZZ. Oh, oh, press the attack, back. instantly cancelling the lasso. Illidan's gonna get nuked down, and now it's Roxkiss on the counter initiation. They burn through Cheshire Cat, he's magnetized, and there goes the Thunder God's Wrath. Just to ensure the kill and give BZZ a double. Now up to 2.5k gold onto that Zeus. That Yule set is looking very, very close for him. Yeah, the Tornado Rocks were very much on point there with the uh, the rotation. The fact that they got uh, pressed the attack at that long range in order to stop the lasso is quite beautiful. And now he's got the Blink Dagger and level 2 duel as well. So he can definitely start racking up the damage. The um, Spectral Ultimate is not up for another 15 seconds. He will still probably need plus one, and this is where the Skyrath Mage... Um, Legion Commander duo really comes into play because it's such a simple process, right? It's 600 magic damage and it's at long range too. So all you have to do is get that duel. The duel lasts long enough for the full Mystic Flare to land. 600 magic damage by itself. You figure Legion Commander probably does at least 200 with right clicks. Any hero like at 800 HP is, is uh, probably going to be dying just from that combo alone. If you throw down Inspector, um, especially if that hero's alone and you start getting Desolate procs as well, it can go all the way up to like 1200 HP and you can take that hero down within the duel duration. We get an answer to the question. It will be an Aether Lens over on the Zeus. So we just bought it straight. After getting those kills, obviously he had more than enough money to do it. The only other item which was purchased Gaia's was uh, Yol's Arcanes. And with a smoke gank, this could be the first duel of the game. They sentry ward down just to make sure there is no obs around here. There is one inside the lane, but now they see the Viper. So, blink, duel, easy kill on the Viper. And bonus damage coming in for the Legion Commander, even though it was BCZ that got it. Illidan, he's going to initiate, but you've got your all over him. BCZ do not even dead because they managed to kick back onto Illidan. So the Morphling will die. The Wistot relocating them in was going to help save the Viper. But the entire lineup of Rock's Kiss was there to kill them all. There's just too much burst damage on this Rocks team. And they can bring everyone so quick, like they, they had yeah. fallen on bottom. And even Cedo is just like, he's just gonna horn himself in. Radiant's bottom tower like they thought, the, um, like it was really quick reactions from the Wisp Dyer's to relocate to that bottom lane. Attack. But the problem is the burst damage was so great that by the time they finished that relocate, the Viper's dead. They gotta try and Cedo. Double TP's coming up to the top lane. Who's going to be him there first? Well, right now it's a treat. Ulti holding him back. Yol trying to kick him back out again. J4 controlled. There's the duel from Legion Commander, but she's already fairly low. She may to fight through this one, but no, she does. Gets the last big swing to wins the duel. But there's still two heroes down for Rock's Kiss, but they keep their Spectre alive. Critical to make sure her Radiance timing is not delayed. They may lose the Sky Wrath. In fact, they will lose the Sky Wrath Mage as well. Illidan comes in there, but it's the Wiz to get the kill. Ross gets Rangers. rotated as quick as they could, but they just didn't have the numbers in Power time. Rangers really uh, not ones to be shut down Dyer's that easily. They realized that that gank at bottom lane came solely because of the fact that the Spectre had the ultimate. So without that ult from the Spectre, they could very likely win a fight. And they chose obviously a perfect target. Go on the Spectre. You're going to force reactions from Tornado Rocks. They have to defend that Spectre. Yep. But the fact that Spectre didn't die, for me, still like flags the fact that Rock's Kiss is in a slightly Dyer's better position. Mm -hmm. is under attack. Just because oh, the Radiance isn't delayed. You're getting major items, the Blade Mail's coming up for the Ninja Commander shortly. The Zeus is not being, like, not being stopped. So he's sitting at five, five kills, zero Dyer's assists, and three deaths. A little bit of a, like, if he only didn't have piss poor attack, uh, maybe he could have denied that mid-tower. Smoke's gonna break. Sentry. They need to have a sentry down. 
There's They've one got double. One too. Yeah, it's RC on the sky right face. They jump forward. And now press the attack. It breaks free and starts to duel over on Cheshire Cat. He's gonna die so quickly. They haunt in reality over this big numb just basically being controlled up by just the Earth Spirit that magnetized. It locked down the relocating in heroes. The rock kick, but it's a Legion Commander to find the kill. Three heroes lost from Power Rage again, that last suit being quelled by Ghostix. Yeah, I would agree with you. You were talking about uh, you felt like Tornado Rocks Kiss were in the better position, and I 100% agree. No matter if Power Rangers were even ahead, like up to, I would say, like 2,000 gold experience. Um, it wouldn't matter to me because the Spectre was getting such good farm. He's going this sort of like pseudo Batman build. He doesn't go the phase boots. He goes treads, and but he does still pick up the urn. But he's going directly into the uh, the radiance after that. And considering that he went for an urn, and the radiance is still going to be picked up by I would say at latest 25 minutes. That is a really good timing on a Spectre, and I think they will just. Uh, run the game essentially from that 25 to 45 minute marker. I think Power Rangers have to push this somehow late game uh, in order to win and obviously even then I'm quite pessimistic about it because it's a Spectre compared to a Morphling. Yeah, that Morphling needs to get so much more if he's going to be able to battle head to head with the Spectre. It's not so bad when you're able to replicate the Spectre out so you take a little bit of his power against him but and the Whisk can do a lot. The Batrider is still the better initiator. Out of out of the two. Oh, can they get the duel for Ghost Dick? Maybe. Oh, oh the lightning still reveals. Can. Ah. Ghost Dick knew. He, he's like, my blink dagger's on cooldown for too long. I won't be able to get the duel. They're also coming in range of the T1 town support of PR. So why take the risk? Just get the kill and get out. Oh yeah, add on to everything else. They're gonna have a medallion on the Legion Commander, which means uh Rojan you, you is actually you quite easy. You think them. it's medallion? Oh it is it's the Sage's mask, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, he, um... I know why I thought it was going to be a blade mill. Um, blade mill is not bad versus Bat Rider or Morphling. Um, as far as like, getting something like a medallion into a solar crest is going to be a lot more useful. Especially when they're looking towards Roshan probably fairly soon. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not too sure what the, um, philosophy is when you don't get blade mail. Um... And when to get medallion. Obviously, Roshan's like definitely a big factor here, but going into the full solar crest. I guess if he has that early, uh, uh, early invasion plus the heavy minus army he lays down into an enemy, uh, he might actually be able to single hand. That's a broadsword and rope Majai. He's actually going to go for the blade mill. Oh, okay. That was weird, because I was like, the, the only reason, Toby, that I said uh, Medallion was because I saw the, the parts of Medallion. Did he sell them? Yeah, he he, uh, he sold the Sage's Mask. He okay. did own the Sage's Mask sitting on the Courier. So... I think he actually bought the recipe at one point in time, too, and I was like, huh, Medallion. I that like, part I didn't see, but, yeah. Uh, it, it just seems a little odd to, like, the Medallion makes sense if you go in for Roshan, that's going to be your gameplay. But if you're just looking to duel and duel again, the Blade Mail is just going to be so damn good because what's more, Morphling isn't going to be building a BKB anytime soon. The Viper will tank through it. The Bat Rider will probably end up just, well, killing himself if he's not careful. Yeah, Ghost Dick, uh, I feel like Ghost Dick doesn't have um, a real firm grasp on what his build should be as a leader. Dyer's commander. middle tower is under attack. Because he bought that, he, like, it, I, I bet what it was is that he bought that Sage's Mask early on in the laning phase because he wanted some mana regen. He's, mm. And he's like, how do I make use of this now? And then he was like, okay, I'll buy the medallion. Then, I don't know, maybe somebody told him, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Get a blade mail. <laughs> You're an offlander that's initiating, right? You should have a blade mail. Like, you make to... yourself a target and then make them hurt themselves when, they, when you become said target. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you too. Like this, the, solar, the solar crest kind of build would have been quite good in this game. As, but yeah, everything is right in the world now, though. Yeah, so we have like, traditional build. Oh, uh, Cedoy, he's finished up his ratings. Now we're gonna see how long he takes before he gets his tanky items. Uh, looking into things more like mana style, for example. But that's a lot of support rotating up here from rocks. J4's on the front lines, they dropped the Sentry Ward down, but it's Illidan who scattered out. Now he's got a replica he can jump to, and Big Dom's already starting to relocate safe. Pulls himself out as well. That concussive shot flew all the way down, tracking down J4. But this Wisp was coming back to his doom. In 3, 2, 1. I wonder why Train Protector didn't stick around. 
you know, stay invis, like maybe over here somewhere. Potentially. You yeah, might just, have also been worried he'll come underneath the sentry ward, because they did plant one down to try and see it. Yeah, maybe, but at the same time, I think it's worth the risk. It wouldn't be worth the risk for him to stick around if he was scared of getting kind of warded and the enemy team didn't have Dyer's a legion commander. But the thing is, when the wisp goes back, it's not just about the, the kill, it's also about the dual damage that legion commander guarantees get, uh, guarantee gets out of that. <laughs> so... Dyer's bottom tower well, they just tried to kill attack. off uh, Ghost Sticks on the bottom lane when that defense came. But the Firefly was wasted by Cheshire Cap. Now Yol is actually going to ball himself over. Nice that wasn't intentional. But either way, Cheshire Cap is going to drop. I don't know if he had vision from the tower or not. In that case, it would have been intentional. Maybe he saw some trees die or something. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Well, the, the trees... Sh like, hurry for Rump with the Fog of War. The trees should update. They if shouldn't, it's in but, fog of but uh, Dota is one hell of a game, Toby. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, you see particle effects inside the Roshan pit, you know, alpha. who the hell knows. We're uh, in Alpha, boys. Yeah. <laughs> still, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is beta version 2. Reborn beta. Alright, so how long is it before rocks can actually go for Roshan? Like, yeah, the Batrider can cause some problems, but... Just picking up that Agassi more than having the extra investment into someone like the Initiating Legion, or just the security onto the Spectre. Maybe they want to find a little bit more control on the map before they they give it a crack. Because I also suppose without the medallion, it makes life a lot harder. Yeah, they. I mean, they don't have any um, any big rush into Roshan. I don't think. They're in pretty solid control of the game, unless they get like one of those guaranteed like we want to fight. Roshan is free. I don't think they should really force it. Oh. The thing is, when you have the better late game... The jump. Oh, no! Oh, and it's too oh. late! Uh, I mean, we could definitely see Tornado Rocks do have um, a bit miscommunication issues and stuff. I'm sure part of it comes down to playing with uh, some stand-ins, but... At the same time, considering the issues we've seen over the last few days, Roxkiss have been playing a fairly good game. It looks like now they're going to try this again. So there's your initial stun. Now they go for the duel. J4, what's he going to try and do here? Throw the ulti out, but the duel still continues. Viper, he'll survive. And they've got the damage with the magnetized Vignum. He's finally going to get kicked <laughs> into oblivion as the will just basically abandon this Legion commander who turns on the blade mail. He's almost found the kill with the help from BZZ. And the movement up, he's going to get it. Cheshire Cat's making Kick his up. play, and they got another stun. No, they don't. Uh. Six will press the attack off the burn. So he's able to run away. So it ends up being a three-for-one trade If You do lose your Spectre in the fight. But still, I'm not quite sure that's uh, that's a, such a bad thing. The advantage is kicking in for the Earth Spirit and the Legion getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, the trade-off was, I think, well Double worth it. Legion did not get dual damage out of that because the Viper survived for so long, right? But I think uh, they just got enough gold out of that fight that it's still good. Plus, Spectre already got, like, the Radiance. It, it's not like... The problem with Spectre dying is in the first 20 minutes Radiance when you don't have Radiance. Like, that, that's the part that really cripples him. Um, because that downtime and the loss of reliable gold, etc., etc., slows down the Radiance massively. When you already have your farming item, aka the Radiance, um, your deaths aren't as... Um, they don't have as a big a, uh, of an effect on your farm and on your general progression throughout the game. It's Radiant's coming, bottom tower What's coming? Attack. The Aghanims. Ah, uh, yes. It's, uh... Aghanims or Spirit. The, the, you know how I said, like, the bottom fight, like, things were coming the way of the Earth Spirit now? I didn't realize just how far they had come along. He's staring down the barrel of what's probably going to be a 30-minute uh, Aghanim except in Earth Spirit. Oh yeah, you want to know something, Toby? Earth Spirit with Ags destroy. I destroy. I am Rider. aware of this. <laughs> it destroys Batrider. Because Batrider's <laughs> like, haha, I'm going to initiate. And even if you lie, though, Yul's just going to be like, nope. <laughs> you're like, hold up. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Turns him into stone, pulls him back, kicks him back. He's like, yeah. It's, it's yeah a, a real cute, your blink dagger and four staff. <laughs> My Ags gives me the distance of that plus. <laughs> Like, that, okay, you know how we would say, like, Power Rangers? Maybe in the late game, like, they've got it, and, like, Cheshire Cat's a better initiator. 
because so many counts against you because you're like it's not just the earth spirit it's the fact you pull him back out spectre can haunt and also follow him down the thunder goes right doesn't care where you are in the field and legion commander can just press the attack as well as the target that got initiated on like I'm, I'm wondering if rocks kiss if they play the fight perfectly if they can even die because the damage output from PR is just not fast enough. Until Illidan gets yeah. something like an E-Blade, he can't pop anyone. Mm -hmm. And even once he gets an E-Blade, um, as we start going late game... Like I said, Power Rangers, their best hope is late game, but it's sort of like... Their best hope is late game because they don't have a better hope at Here's early or mid game. This is a very Dead Sky Wrath Mage. He realizes he's in trouble. Uh, where's your cat going? I don't know. He, he's looking for more. He has the Observer Ward. All right, and they're going to relocate down. They want to kill off the Zeus. Now, he is a 7-kill streak. And it's hired to get the kill. But they abandon their Viper in order to do such a thing. Now, Skyrath Mage will die. So, Viper does get some revenge. And actually, under BKB protection, TP's out. Cancels his TP. So, Yol will turn around for the kick. Cedo does not want to be here, though. That Viper yeah. is just so low, and you get a haste rune on a Spectre. Yeah, he's definitely fine. Yeah. I believe, Toby, when you said abandon the Viper, I believe you meant to say leave him for him to get solo experience. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, the Viper, like that fresh BKB he has, uh, he just picked it up. It was like, okay, 10 second BKB, turns around, kills the Skyrath Mage, and still able to get out. It, it looked kind of bad at first. I was just yeah. like, what the hell? I didn't realize Shish he had cat. I was like, where the hell is your <laughs> cat going? What's going on? But he had vision uh, thanks to the ward of the Zeus, mm. and he just prioritized that kill, which I think was the right idea. I like this combo now for the Rocks Kids. Uh, it's the Veil of Discord that's just been picked up by, by the Sky Wrath Mage. So he can use this to amplify oh, the yeah. Zeus without Zeus having to expend uh, his money to buy such an item. So Zeus still has 3.5k gold, so BZZ's got a lot of things he can pick up. I still find it amusing that it was Io, it was the Wisp, that got the 885 gold for killing off Zeus. Like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what's... He, he bought a Glimmer Cape with it, yay. <laughs> but that could have been Viper finishing up an SMY, or... Like, it looks like Elden does have that, that E-Blade now. Uh, I, I think I'm actually... If I have my choice, I think... Wisp is actually up there and taking the last hit because of the Glimmer Cape item that he got. Obviously, I don't want him to get any more kills if I'm Power Rangers, but completing the Glimmer Cape is actually pretty good when you look at the, the heroes on Tornado Rocks. He can save somebody from the dual uh, Skyrath Mage combination. He's got a lot of like um, damage from both Zeus and Earth Spirit. They're going to be hitting him when he's going in these fights, whether they're attempting to or not. It's going to hit the Wisp somehow. And he needs to be able to keep himself alive uh, as yeah, long as possible. It's here. Yeah. Now, we'll, now we will see. Can you can you uh, make an ethereal rock? An ethereal rock? No. I'm wondering just how effective the T plate's going to be then. Rocks only live on one plane, Toby. Dyer's There's probably some geological humor attack. there, which I could pull out. What's the opposite of ethereal? Physical. Physical. They live on the physical realm, totally. Okay. So this one, I hope I'm right. Man, that observer ward, it's, gotta be it's only got a couple of seconds up. left. They ball in, they get the duel. It's over on Illidan. And, oh, the relocate! Oh, the lightning they bolt! Didn't, they didn't control him. It was half a second from going down. That lightning bolt hits. It stops the relocate out. And they kill at least the wind, if not the more than Wow, that was... The other thing, too, is the fact that you don't even get the duel when... Because you started the duel over on the Morphling means when wow. the Wisp relocates back in, it's not the guaranteed damage onto the Legion. Uh, that's just really, well... I mean, that's um, that's a misplay by the Earth Spirit, first and foremost, and then that was just also bad luck that Lightning Bolt was the half a second. Dyer's bottom tower has been... Oh, uh, Hello? Top tower has that's not a good idea. <laughs> They got the Deny in the Tier 2 Tower right as all of PR is marching down this bottom lane, and he decides it's a good idea to throw Concussive Shot. I don't know why, but... Are fortified. It, it seemed off. It's, it's it. like they looked like they were initiating, Radiance and then the Thunder God's Wrath came in. Which also didn't make sense, like, and also the timing for it for BZZ was wrong. 
Because yeah. now, like, he has the lower cooldown timer on it, but... Octarine Core picked up there. for the Zeus means that we now have a Thunder God's Dyer's Wrath bottom every tower minute. Is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is but under that attack. won't be up fast enough to see uh, Power Rangers taking Roche. This is their uh, best time to take control of the game. Power Rangers got a bad Sea of Blade combination and just start popping heroes left and right. And from there, hopefully scale into the late game with some superiority. But again, late game is still actually better for Tornado Rocks, most likely. That's if the Spectre can keep finding farm. Yeah, they, but this they, Morphling is reaching that point where he's the threat which we kind of was were looking for him was looking for him to become. Oh, they're gonna relocate. They're headed top. And they actually find the Legion Commander. No way to survive for this one. Spectre actually realities in this one. Makes more of himself and with a Thunder Ghost right, they're gonna find one kill, but Big Nut needs to die. Big one Big second, them. they need to kill oh. him! D is he it just me or was Cedar right clicking creeps or something? Uh his illusions were right clicking creeps. He was focusing on the Wisp at one point. But yeah, I just seemed like he was a little bit slow. Oh, sorry, to, sorry, focusing on the bat rider. Yeah, it felt like he was a little bit slow. Go to transfer from the bat to the wisp. Well, it seems odd that you'd actually start on the bat rider too. Like if you're gonna haunt yourself in and then and uh, do that, you <laughs> want to try and track down the wisp. The rock, oh, it manages to kick. It finds Elden, and then they're gonna kick him back, breaking the Lincolns, burning the Aegis, the immortal, the viper. Gonna strike down on top of the Spectre. Can they break him free? No, they can't. He gets e bladed down as Illidan strength morphs up underneath that silence of the Earth Spirit. The BKB gonna trigger from the Viper, allowing him to keep fighting. And BZZ, and he found just enough space to blink himself up to the high ground and away. If Yol was a bigger baller, he would have uh, rocked the Spectre before they uh, they managed to burst her down. Do it. Do it. Because the Spectre. Do it. Is, uh... Do it. If Illidan's visible to this creep wave right now, wait, is a level 3 enough for him? That's, that's 180 life. It's, yeah, it's 640 damage. It's 100% enough. I can see attack. him. Wait. Uh, uh, I think it's still. Oh, yeah, there's a duel. Yeah, okay, that was they found Chat Cat. Yeah. Free damage. I'm like sitting there going, why wouldn't BC. And, like, as soon as the Morphling shows up, why wouldn't he do that? Like, I don't understand why. And I'm, and I'm like. Trying to think to myself, and I'm going, does Lincoln's block Zeus ultimate? I'm like, no, no, of course not. But that's the only reason I could see him not using it there, because he showed up at like 250 HP or something. Like that, that's definitely enough for the 475 damage. You only, uh, are, are we like, you are should we always about Lincoln's not blocking the ulti. Because I, I, oh yeah, yeah definitely, like it, it definitely has. Okay, but the the thing is that. <coughs> If you're playing a magic damage dealer like Zeus or something, you should always be able to do the quick math of just taking Radiant a quarter of whatever, like right now, just take 25% off of your 475 damage from Thunder God's Wrath, and that'll tell you like kind of the pure damage result, right? So if you ever see a hero like Morphling who only Dyer's has the basic magic resistance, attack. if you ever see him below that marker, boom, right click, or, or, or hit the R button, and he, he's like guaranteed dead. Radiance now he's got a BKB is under attack. So he can jump in, Ethereal Blade, pop the BKB, go to work. Speaking of work, Illidan just did some. Like, Roskiss still haven't taken a single tier 1 tower in this game, which seems crazy when you think about it. That Morphling just took half of the life off that bottom tier 3 tower. Oh, Viper's dead. Oh, the BKB! And they can't commit at all after that because. What are you going to do, haunt? I mean, they probably should have haunted. They probably thought they, they could burst him down. But if they committed the haunt, they get that pick off. And now they have Illidan. Legion dual Commander time. prepping. Triggers a Lincoln Spear and then nice goes for the play. duel. Wonderful combo. And Pignum, he also gets rocked up. They're going to get both of them. And in fact, the Viper, he's actually so low back at base. Thunder God's Rath still on cooldown for the moment. Yell throws down the sentry orb, but doesn't see J4. He's around the tree line. Radiance Goes for the kick, but doesn't find anyone. Fallen. And now, finally, Roskiss will take two towers. Uh, this is where uh, Tornado Roskiss really starts snowballing because their lineup Radiance is so terrible at taking towers 
They took their first tower at 37 minutes. Now once they have true control of the game where they can take towers pretty much as they please, you're going to see that network just plummet into their favor. Radio it's gonna very deceptive. I'm wondering if this is, if this is the play. But there's still 30 Radio seconds without a morphling, so, yeah. so they're going to try and force it. You got your ulti back up again for the Zeus, so that burst damage is available. But it's not there for the Spectre, but it looks like it doesn't even matter. Still 20 seconds until you've actually got the Morphling. You rock the Batrider, that melee rack's almost down. J4 trying to buy some time. The Manasar breaking a free Batrider. Goes for the last two. He picked up the Legion Commander back into the Tier 4 tower. Even if Ghost 6 dies right now, if they get the melee racks, it's going to be worth it. But the rest of Roxas, they have to get out to safety. The burn is still on that Legion. In fact, I cannot believe she survived through that. Yeah, I was like, holy crap. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, Ghost gets running back with them. <laughs> yeah, Radiant's he survived. Is under attack. He, 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 got, he got kicked by the Earth Spirit, right? Um, yeah, I would have presumed that's what happened. Or, I, I or actually pulled, I should see. say. Yeah, he got uh, Enchant Remnant pulled back, and I'm not sure if he kicked him back as well. But, uh, that was well played. I, I, you, you can probably check the stream in about one minute, and you'll see it yourself. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm like, positive that happened. I, I just, like, in my in my head, I just sort of, like, wrote it off. I was like, all right, Leech Commander in exchange for the melee racks. And then I was specifically watching the way that the rest of Tornado Rockskis were responding to what was happening. And again, I saw a bit of hesitation. I saw a bit like they weren't on the same page and they weren't doing the most efficient thing for them. Um, like the Spectre started running back after the pullback on the Legion Commander. Like, what's the point? The, the, like the most dangerous thing that possibly could have happened to the Spectre at that point in time was that pullback and it didn't happen to him. You know, just like complete the rack and go from there. Yeah, the Spectre shouldn't have any fear soon. But well, he's gonna have a full heart over on Cedoy. Then the damage output, it really won't come close enough now. Relocate, they're going out of bottom lane. Sidoy, well, how tanky can he be? They're going to actually now hoard it out with the Thunder God's Wrath. Big is so low, they can actually isolate the heroes. And Sidoy, he will go down. The Viper will get the attack. They pick off the Wisp, but you've just traded two cores for just the Wisp. Okay, maybe they get an extra. Nope, they don't. There's... We've all had that happen, I think. If you played Spectre... Where you pop hunt and you're low HP and you're trying to get out of where you're at and you start like panic, uh, reality. Yeah, panic reality all over the place. That That's what he was doing right there. Because he had a somewhat of an escape and that was on the tree and protector. It was a little bit farther away from the rest of the team. But then I think he screwed it up. He went to the tree and protector and then went somewhere else. And then from there he had nowhere else to go. It was only the four other Power Ranger heroes in one spot. He might be a little annoyed he didn't spend his money before that. He could have bought the entire heart. In fact, it looks like he still can. He bought the Reaver, and uh, yeah, he doesn't have the recipe just yet. Oh, he has the Reaver? I didn't notice that. Uh, he only just purchased it. The courier just flew out to pick okay, it up now. Cool. But it means he lost money during, uh, during that death. But all the gold he's got left now is just fully reliable. So at least he won't go below that. You actually just wonder if it's worth just buying the full heart now. Double damage. Like just have that survivability. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I believe that it is not worth keeping that reliable than having. Because he if can it was also, like any he can other also wait like, like one minute worth of farm and he will have the money for buyback yeah, anyway. If he gets picked off right now because he doesn't have a heart. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, at least he's got buyback. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, he might have still died if he did have the heart. So, I guess it's better for him to keep the reliable gold. See, in in my mind, um, if it was any other item but the heart, I would say yes. Keep your reliable gold so you have the buyback. That's a smart play. But for me, it's like heart increases your survivability so much that it's hard to say I should have a second life when you could just make that first life so much tankier. BZZ, able to see the Batrider sitting in the tree line. They've already living armored, it up, living armored him up, just so he's ready to jump in for the initiation. The Rocks guess really don't want to start that, because if they start it, that's when the Spectre has to buy back. I hope Morphling doesn't stay on the meta. You lucky ducks. Quick, 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 with spawn. the DD, that's... Pretty damn good. 
It's like, ah, oh, Morphin casually hits for over 600 uh, almost. Yell's kind of got to kick into the pit and have a look. Like, they find the Observer Ward at least. But they have to look into Roshan right now. In fact, it's already too late. Because that double damage rune, they were just so quick at doing this Power Rangers. And now, Cheshire Cat's looking for a, a scalp. He's a little bit too far away until BTZ walks into him, but that also puts his Blink Dagger on the cooldown. But now Power Rangers are in a position where they have the Immortal Morph. He should also probably be looking to sell that Ring of Aquila sometime soon with 4.8k gold stashed up. Illidan could... Actually, where do you even go here? Um, Scotty's pretty good. What you I think about Monkey King Bar? Because you're still... Ah, uh, you got... Nah. I'm only thinking that because you're underneath the Radiance. Just going stats is going to be better. Yeah, uh, but but Morphling is in so dependent on his right clicks as most other carriers. Oh, Illidan. He waveforms. Now BKBs, but he had the replicate. So he jumps out to it. No ability to duel him through that. I think I personally prefer Scotty for him. Um, and that would be because... I think he should try and buff up his full agility HP a little bit more, and that'll also give him Fidoy. more bursting power. Where did he go? He went to the Viper, but the attack is oh! It followed him! It followed him the whole way! Holy He's crap. down, he has buyback available, he actually spent his money this time around, so he spent his unreliable gold on the heart, but he still has a reliable gold that gives him buyback. Radiant so you'll have it when he respawns, but... Man, how does this happen? Then, so Horn does this joint. Now the relocate's gonna come to bottom lane as Ross gets trying to force it out. Yol, where's that saving grace? The BKB nice has play. been triggered by the Legion Commander, but Yol, he's gonna leave it behind. Gozik just needs to get himself out of here, but he's got no BTs. Or a TP scroll, so there's no way for him just to TP himself out. This one, starting a duel, make no sense, as all they do is just give over the damage. So they're just kite him around, and uh, that's gonna be a very dead Legion Commander. Still though, the fact that they both the Earth Spirit and the Zeus survived was pretty damn good. That that was actually pretty clutch. Yol um, did the quick attack. save on Zeus, turned him into stone, pulled him back, kicked him away, and then he also managed to get the space to rolling boulder TP out himself away. So that'll actually prevent um, Power Rangers from going uphill with too much of an advantage. They they'll essentially be left in a. Four versus five with Tornado Rocks available to five by five. If they'd lost the Zeus, though, that would have been uh, probably Power Rangers uh, taking at least tier three. Well, they're looking at it down to tier three at the moment. Illidan's going to do so much damage. And he's still the Aegis, the Immortal no, guy. So what are you going to do here? Cheshire Cat looks at the opening. He finds BZZ. The kick happened over on the Morphling, but now he BKB's out of it. And BZZ is in way too deep. But then again... The saving grace, he's still not out just yet, but he's got enough time to throw out that ultimate. Spect is now back into the fight too. No haunt available, there's still four seconds left on cooldown. And the range ranks has gone down, no fortification available. Cedo just being stunned down for the moment, not too much of a stun, and the bottom ranks is gone. The only way Roskiss now get an advantage here is if, to, if Power Rangers try and overstay their welcome, which they've actually done. The duel will happen on top of that Viper with the Mystic Fled. No! <laughs> what? Relocate save and pull him out just far enough. The winner is still there because it didn't pull him far enough. Now the Magnetize turns on Cheshire Cat as well as Big Num. They don't really stand much of a chance of surviving through this one. J4 trying to give him a little bit more regeneration. Cheshire Cat, the TP was Oh, oh he got him! He's still burnt! He still went down, Ilden with a stun and adapted strike. He'll get a revenge kill over on top of that Earth Spirit. But right now it's three and a half heroes. The other half coming back to life again. It's Illidan. And Cedo does not want to be part of their spectral dagger in four seconds time. He's regenerating up thanks to the heart. And he's chasing down Illidan, but he'll need more help. Duels off cooldown in nine seconds time. So they will have the lockdown. The BKB from Illidan's available. Now he'll start his TP. And they've got no way to stop it. Why did our Zeke run? Oh, probably because he was like, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> My Morphling's just gonna burst me down once he comes back up. That makes sense. Because uh, for me, I was just like, any way you can slow down the Morphling, you should. Right? So I was like, why isn't he trying to, you know, concussive shot or ancient seal? At least yeah, Morphling would have taken him with him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a fly at this point in time, you know? He, he just gets swatted aside and he doesn't make any time. He, he doesn't slow down the Morphling at all. 
Oh, Morphling's got other ways to break free Radiant's now. He's got a Manta style available. Flying in on the courier. And Roskis is just going to bail out of here. J4 if he... Okay. Oh, if J4's that, got eggs. He's got to get that out to him right now. Yeah, like, that courier should be prioritized for him. That's quite the game changer. Um, so... For those watching and wondering, like, what's kind of gone wrong, things look so good for Tornado Rocks, they got picked off, like, too many times. It was, like, takeoff after takeoff after pickoff, where they just lit the Morphling. Um, you can see it on the graph. Yeah, like, it, it all, all, all you're looking right now is Radiant Dots until that last fight when they got a couple yeah, back. Viper kills Spectre. Uh, <laughs> Viper kills Spectre. They get a tower off of that. Viper kills Spectre again. Uh, Morphling kills Legion Commander. What just like pick off after pick off on the the most crucial hero of Tornado Rocks, and the thing was the hero was always alone. Yeah, Tor Tornado Rocks weren't grouping up like they should have been against a Morphling with Ethereal Blade. And I think, like again, we've talked about miscommunication and stuff, but I also think that's just rusty play. They're not used to it. Oh, the jumping, the duel is over on the Morphling. Aye. They burst him so quickly. The buyback is available. There was a replica from the front lines, but I don't know if they're still existing anymore, but they're chasing after the Viper. They need more damage, however. The BKB will protect him, and the Morphling, okay, he does buy back. There's no frontal jump position, and they're actually getting the kill over on that Wisp. His relocate save unsuccessful. You know, Morphling isn't careful. Oh, never mind. He would be fine. I forgot he's got that Lincolns. He's got Lincoln's Manta and BKB. Like yeah. he's he's so difficult to control. The fact that Roskis actually achieved that, it's it's like the only scenario where it works. The blink duel before Illidan can reply. I was gonna say that Tornado Rocks um, have one of the best heroes to both defend and go high ground, and that's the Earth Spirit. Just because it's so easy for him to pick somebody off. So that is going to be a problem. If Power Rangers lose another fight like that, they have to kind of keep in Radiant's mind that that fight could be four attack. versus five when they try and defend high ground because of Yule. Cheshire Cap, he Radiant's was a target. He sees the uh, the movement away. The concussive shot as well as a little bit more of the blinks keep him just a distance. I'm wondering if it's worthwhile because Cheshire Cat looks like he's just uh, he's just got the googly eyes of BZZ. Maybe it's worth BZZ going into something like a Lincoln Sphere at this point. Like, I know you could have, like, the Refresher Orb, or you could have, like, the Aghanim Scepter. Uh, there's a lot of options for the Zeus. But that Batrider initiation seems to be coming in him most of the time. Hmm. I would say Refresher is the best item for him to get right now, because uh, I think they won't... I think the best thing for them is to get more burst damage. Um more potential global burst damage so that, that if they do get the duel on the the demorphling, they can burst Ooh, him down before he's, he's underneath the sentry ward. Oh, that's a quick and easy duel and they're gonna find J4 out as well. He's under the secondary okay vision. That's that's uphill push. Yep. I mean unless they're gonna try and go for Roshan, which little do they know, but that's not up for a couple minutes. I actually have to wait the maximum time for this Roshan, practically. Yeah. Interesting that Skyrath Mage actually is going to buy the gem now. It was the lightning bolt that gave him the last bit of vision over on the Triumph. But I suppose when you're going up against the Aghanim's ulti of the Nature's Prophet, of, of, of the Triumph Protector. Radiance top tower I guess it's going to be worth attack. it. You got to chop down some trees. They need a Calling Blade. Fallen. I don't think anyone's even got the Iron Talon anymore. Yeah, no one's got Calling Blades. <laughs> they got no way to get through the trees. Radiance top tower is under attack. Shouldn't Zeus just be able to lightning bolt the tree? Come on, Val. What, and then the tree slowly unreal. burns over a period Radiance of five seconds? Maybe. Nah, have you ever seen lightning hit a tree? It, it doesn't just burn. Well, it, it, explodes. it snaps the tree in half. Yeah. Yeah. Normally it cracks it. I used to have a tree in my backyard. That was hit by uh, hit by lightning before we moved there, and over the course of the probably six years that we lived there, the tree slowly started growing back. Yeah, it was like a, this kind of like dead tree that didn't have any leaves. And over the course of six years, you could see part of the tree was growing back. That was my Jurassic Park nature finds a way. Was it moment, Toby? Did you genetically modify your tree? 
It's, is your is your tree just gonna go nuts and just start attacking random people uh, and then be trained I'm by one ruggedly handsome rogue? Yeah, well, that's how Timbersaw was born. So <laughs> they're checking so Roche, but I I cannot believe they tried to take they didn't try and take advantage of the fact that they picked off two heroes in the space of five seconds and those two heroes were down for a full minute. And they didn't try and like. You're, Go you're, uphill. You know what they've achieved though? They've achieved to find a way to how to kill a tree. They kill it with a rock, That's or in true. this case, a boulder. Yell boulder the tree. That's how I got rid of got rid of one that of the paper trees. Beats rock. <laughs> it's like ah, oh, okay. There's the tree. Boulder. Radiance bottom tower. The efficiency. Well done, y'all. Roll out. Dyer's top tower roll is under out. attack. I was actually waiting for you to go for a full um roll out the barrel. No. Yeah, that, that is that is your song, Toby. That well yeah. Sorry, the Andrews. Of course I would The Andrew Sisters was a huge inspiration Dyer's to my life, Cap. Don't take away my inspiration. Sorry. Butterfly is almost up on Shidoi. Uh, uh He's got the cash for the whole thing now. Ghost Dick almost has something. Does he take? Is it Legion that takes the Aegis here? Because you got Aegis as well as Cheese. I think your most suicidal hero makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, now they realize there's also Cheese and BZZ can drop his bottle and give that to some. Wait. Did he mean that? Did he? Uh, somebody's got to get it. Homie. Just plant the observer. Want to take it? No. What? The uh, courier's coming. The courier is slowly coming. Yeah. Wait, no, he's headed to the shop. Yeah. I'm sure it'll make a pit stop in the Roshan. It's got a demon edge on it. Uh, <laughs> no one likes a cheesy delectable. No one. I don't know. They saw it. They did. <laughs> we just, just like taking it, it out. It's like, your guys, um, <laughs> please. <laughs> or he's like, y'all are idiots. B Z Z. No, I think he wanted to finish his size of vice before he then grabbed the cheese. <laughs> but why would you do that? You just put the bottle on the ground and take the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what matters is they kept the cheese. Power Rangers didn't endeavor to steal it. They probably didn't even there, know. There should, there should be. So there's an oh announcement, yeah, yeah, yeah. like which says, like, you, you have that announcement, this person picked up yeah. the Aegis of the Immortal. You don't have a, this person is currently having, like, cheddar. Yeah, they, they shouldn't have that announcement. They should be like, this person picked up the Aegis, this person picked up the cheese. You know what they should actually do? Because you ever they have those moments, Kobe, where that message doesn't pop up, and you're like, holy shit, they haven't grabbed the Aegis. <laughs> yeah. But you're like, go Roshan Pit, boys. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should make different levels of cheese. And just start it with, like, like Stilton. Like, then you got, like, the blue cheese. And then the classic cheddar. Uh-oh. And it just gets oh, stronger. Batrider Bat Bat Rider. Oh, hey! <gasps> Pulled all the way back, and then BKBs to escape. That's out of five seconds on his BKB now. If it wasn't before. I do find it interesting though that the second the Aegis Demona gets picked up by the Legion Commander, she goes to the bottom lane and farms up four waves. Like I know they're, they're still gonna get like the balance of the waves back in their control. Like you've gotta be looking to engage now. And the Legion is doing the split pushing instead of the Spectre. Spectre's currently farming inside the jungle. Unless their objective is somewhere else, like... The bottom towers are being healed up. You've already taken out the mid rack, so it's either top or it's gonna be bottom. Like, that's that's your focus right now. Divine Rapier time?! For who? I don't know, Illidan's got a demon edge on himself. I'm sure it's the MKB, but... It would be really fun. Oh, he missed. He missed the tree. Did you see that? Yeah, it's, it's a monkey king bar. <laughs> Wait, did he miss the boulder? Yeah. See a line of dead trees. There's another uh, one down here for him to go for. I mean, honestly, though, I, I really think that... Like, Divine Rapier is actually probably his best bet. I, I, I feel pretty confident about Tornado Rocks. Like, they, I think they have, like, an 80% chance to win this game. You gotta do something pretty off the wall to 
to win a fight again. The attack has begun, the BKB lasso, they caught BZZ, but of course he gets turned to stone, and they can't do anything about it. He just blinked himself out of the fight, and now it's actually the Legion Commander who's stuck on the front lines. She'll burn through the Aegis, the Immortal, but there's still been a lot committed to try and get this Cedoy. He's in very, very deep now. He does oh, not have a Cedoy. secondary life, oh. and they can't kill him! The buyback comes down from the Morphling. They press the attacker back out to safety. Yoli's still got the save, but now, well, Illidan can be hexed up for the moment. Urspur, he is going to drop. They leave the Gemma True site behind. Cheshire Cat, he doesn't actually have the control. They're going to press up Cedoy back to the high ground, hoping the PR will actually chase them here. But the mid lane is pushing in a little bit too hard if they want to keep their rain tracks. And they did manage to hold the bottom lane here, PR, even though it did cost them, what was it, two buybacks on the Viper and the Morphling. Yeah, and it didn't cost Cedoway a buyback. I'm, I'm like 90% sure that he was going into that fight, assuming he was going to die, and he was going to buy back ult. Right? Because he almost died without using Haunt. And that, that would just be a no-no. Unless you're planning on using that buyback to come back into the fight. I think Cedo was ready to like full-in commit and try and end the game there. But then it just turned out he didn't die at all. And then he got the chance to eat the cheese, and then they go, okay, we forced buybacks, and we... Um, we still took it to the they come. That's pretty good. Press and duel. They get the Viper. No BKB charge from this time around. And two minutes on the sideline. That could be the kill to win it for him right now. Unless Illidan can pull something out of his ass. And he's looking over towards Ghostix. But Ghostix already in a double kill. He'll fall himself back. But actually burns to the replicate of Spectre. That's actually doing quite a fair chunk of work. Surprisingly too, J4 able to TP himself out. The relocate save is there to keep the Morphling alive. As the Haunt goes after J4 inside the base. Not They'll a great be kept haunt. in, but it's not enough. Not a good haunt at all. They like, don't even get Vignum. Like, he relocates yeah. back out, but they're not Radiant's there. You should know, like, the attack. Wisp took him back to Fountain. You're not gonna kill that. So, he just kinda wasted that. That, uh... That ult, but... That's fine, they can sit back. Wait for 60 seconds for the Luigi Commander to come back anyway. Cause that'll be three heroes without buyback. And their three cores will have buyback. So, just wait for Han to come back up. Tornado rocks, then five man down bottom again. Scouting out to see if there's a smoke gank going on. Because the thing is, they would have to be... They would probably have to lose three fights in a row to lose their advantage. The initial fight when they push down bottom, where they get rebuffed... And then even then, Power Rangers are unlikely to try and counter because they don't have buyback, right? So then mm -hmm. they would have to lose a second fight and then go from there. Haste. I never get phone calls. <laughs> no, you... Uh, well, I don't even know what that is. Huh. All right. Maybe they're just calling in the one hour mark. Smoke gank time now from PR, so after that Thunder God's Wrath was done, they're feeling a little bit more confident to come out for this. It's also for the fact that they removed the, uh, the easy detection from rocks. So there's the gem over on the Bat Rider at the moment, but they also, I believe, have one... Yeah, there's one back in the base, which is the one taken off the Sky Wrath Mage. So the battle for Vision is a little bit harder now for Rock's Kiss. Obviously, you're still walking around with a Zeus, but... That's not the easiest form of detection every single time. And these tree and old these tree and trees are going everywhere. And it looks like Rock's Kiss are not gonna find anyone. Like J4 is the closest to them. And even then he's running around invis. So he could break the smoke on them. And they actually buy they just buy a new gem. More tree. J4 is pushing his luck here. <laughs> He's Jesus. coming out very aggressively to put down trees, which will just instantly get taken out. Like the fact you don't have the gem though on the Earth Spirit does make a bit of a question mark, but he sees a lot behind. Like even these positions of these two trees make it very difficult for them to get rid oh, of and now the duel! Oh no! They call the Bat Rider! He's down for a very long time, the Legion Command takes a lot of damage, but then he's just rocked up again, able to blink himself away. Cedar is going to get E-bladed for the moment. But there's not enough burst to really do enough of a dent into that Spectre. So he backs up and lets the heart do its work. And they're going again. 
They get the blink hex on the five up with the Mystic Flare. That's it. That's going to be the game right there. Roskids have two huge kills. They will take out the bottom ranks. They'll fortify up PR, but like it's almost a minute and a half that Roskids will be fighting three on five. Like, you do have your big man, which is Elden. If he drops, this is a guaranteed GG. Right now, it's like 99.999 recurring percent chance that Rox will win this. Yeah, it, the problem is that um, that when you start going late enough game with um, Spectre, she's just going to get so tanky that you won't be able to pop her with that um, Ethereal Blade combination. So where do you go from there? Ghost Dick? Well, he, oh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Elden's gonna break free. I is doing whatever he can here to keep his teammates alive, but Well, don't worry guys. PR will have another chance. This is a two-game series, our first of the night for Dota Pit. And right now, with Roxkiss having mega creeps, they still have a 34-second window. I think Gosix wants to go in for another duel, and he's found it. He goes on a big number with that 214 bonus damage. He helps to kill off the Morphling. And that is GG. Game one. Belongs to Rocks. Yeah, pretty solid by Rocks. Yes, they had um, a slight bit where they were like kind of throwing the advantage that they had. They had like 8,000 gold and it just kind of like uh, got grinded back by pickoff after pickoff from Power Rangers. Shouldn't have uh, ever given that opportunity for Power Rangers to come back into the game. But all around, I think they played a, a quite solid game and I like their draft. Um, I like the way that they picked up Legion Commander with the Zeus Inspector. The Skyrath Mage and Earth Spirit. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure Power Rangers will not leave the Earth Spirit in the game again. Like Yul wasn't the most amazing <laughs> Earth Spirit I've ever seen, but he was still like adequate enough with that hero, and it does so much when you play it right. Yeah, when we saw it, we saw it. How many times? How many times did Illidan get denied? Well, J4, also zero for eight. Maybe one time he'll get himself a kill. He's a train protector. He's not meant to do that. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Poor guy. <laughs> All right, short break, so guys. Nice. We'll be back. Game number two, Rocks versus Power Rangers. Before we have our double header for Team Liquid. That's right, four games straight of Team Liquid coming up. Their opponents being Team Empire plus, uh, who is their other one? It is Hellraisers. Well, I should be their first opponent. Stay tuned. We'll be back for all that action.
It must be in our minds. Mind.